I've got two important things to say about John chapter 17. Number one, it's his last night. Number two, it's his prayer. When you hear the Lord's prayer, oh, thy father, our father, that's not the Lord's prayer. That's the disciples asking Jesus, teach us to pray. Then he goes, I can't even remember it. But here is the Lord's prayer. This is the longest New Testament prayer recorded in the Bible. These words spanked Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. For the purpose, Lord, my glory is your glory. Here comes the cross. Three and a half years later. And as thou hast given him power over all flesh, <clears throat> that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Eternal life is by Jesus. Nothing else. And they're given to Jesus by God. And they're given to God by Jesus. This is eternal life. That they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. No church, no baptism, no religion. Salvation rests upon God and Jesus Christ alone. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. So in order to get to God, <clears throat> you got to get to Jesus. Without Jesus, you're not getting to God. God won't hear you. I have glorified thee on the earth. Everything that Jesus done was for God's glory. <clears throat> and man outright rejected it. These 11 men that are with him right now, they kind of get it. They don't get it. They haven't got an idea. But they're still following. They haven't betrayed him. They haven't sold him out. They haven't walked away. I have finished the work which thou has given me to do. He's saying that before the cross. So don't tell me in the garden Jesus is praying, Oh, Father, let me not die. That's ridiculous. As he's praying in chapter 17, he's praying, it's already done. There's no going back. There's no calling the angels. I have set my course. I am going. I can't say that. I cannot say today that I am going to be faithful tomorrow. And yet Jesus could. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Uh-oh. The pre-existence of Jesus Christ before Genesis 1. Before the, even the earth and all the people that were in it, Jesus Christ was being glorified by God and Jesus was glorifying God. And he'll glorify God in the eternal future and God will glorify him in the eternal future with all the saints that believed on Jesus Christ. You know, there's going to be souls in the eternal future heaven that were in the eternal past. And there's going to be ones missing from the eternal future. Satan and all his angels will not be there. But every Christian who's born again by the blood of Jesus Christ will be there. 
I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Jesus acknowledged those 11 men came out. Can he say that about the Christian today? You've got to come out of the world. This is his prayer to God. There's no joke playing. There's no fooling around. He is going to that cross in this moment. He's, he's crying his heart out to the Father. And he says, these men are out of the world. When Paul got saved, he remained out of the world. He records one man went back into the world. And you never heard from him again. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. What are you going to do with that one? What are you going to do with that one with Bible correctors? If you're a Bible corrector, you're not in with the prayer of Jesus Christ, the Lord's Prayer. Looks like to me with the Bible, Scripture with Scripture, God is angry with those that will change His Word. Not only am I a King James Bible-believing man, but I live by the King James. I just don't claim it. I also live it. That's what God wants me to do. <clears throat> now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. That's one thing they learned. Don't, don't call them idiots. Don't call them simpleton. There's one thing they got that Jesus says to the Father right now. These 11 right here, Lord, they may not understand, but they do know one thing right now. You have given me all the power to do what I've done. They've got that much. Now, the resurrection, when they don't believe that he came from the grave, okay, that's something else. I'm going to have to rebuke them for that one. But right now, their, toast, their testimony is by Jesus Christ, his mouth, speaking to his father. They know you and I are one in one. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Oh, inspiration. Everything that is red letter and you got red letter Bible. And even the ones not recorded, we're going to read in the last chapter of John. There are many things Jesus said that were not recorded in the Gospels. But I think in Hebrews, I think Paul, or Paul says something. It is written, I'll never leave thee or forsake thee. Go ahead, try to find that in the Gospels. It ain't there. Everything that Jesus spoke was of God. And he is the word, John 1.1. 1, 1. <clears throat> And they had received them the words. There is no salvation out the word of God. And have known surely that I came out from thee, and they had believed that thou didst send me. Now there is no prayer for comfort or relief here. And what's going to happen tomorrow? Judas, spit, whips, thorns, nails, death, and hell. Where is the prayer for relief? Where is the prayer, prayer for, oh God, no. Jesus is going to have one of the worst days ever that no man has ever had tomorrow. What if God would give us a revelation of what's going to happen tomorrow? It's going to be it would be terrible. What would our prayer be today? If you just read, I'm going to show you, just give you a little glimpse of how bad a day you're going to have tomorrow. How selfish would we would I be in my prayer life? I say me. I pray for them. 
Jesus is God, right? He is the author of our salvation, correct? And he is praying for us. Don't go say, my prayers were answered. Because the Bible records that not only does Jesus pray, but the Holy Spirit also groans words we cannot utter. It's not just you that got the prayer answered. How big I think of myself when I think, oh, the prayer I pray was answered and forget to give Jesus the credit. I pray for them. Ready? I pray not for the world. That's your family. That's your co-workers. That's your associates. That's your friends. If he's got the whole world in his hand, he's going to let his hand go as they drop off in the lake of fire. The world's work was done in John 3.16. So don't come to me and tell me if you reject Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus loves me. Really? He won't even pray for you. You are not on his mind at the right hand of the Father. The mind would be, Father, do you see that Christian down there trying to witness for me? Yes. He's getting a hard time. Lord, God the Father... Let's get in a little prayer huddle with the Holy Spirit and pray for that man to stand strong. Okay. What about that man's giving a hard time to the world? To hell with him. He won't believe us. Okay. You say that's true. That's the truth. It's terrible to have God say to hell with you. Never mind if man says it. No matter if man says go to hell. When God tells you go to hell. Those are words that just choked me up. I will never hear that by Jesus. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. I'm a Christian by the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know what? I'm God's. The Paul goes on later to say, I am a child of God by the gospel of Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit indwelling me. I am God. We take it so lightly say, I'm a child of, of God. You realize what that means by adoption? He owns me. And we read Jesus say it. And it just came out of my mouth. I will never deny thee. They are thine. And all mine are thine, and all thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now, Jesus is not saying he's God. He's saying it there. You realize we carry, those who are truly born again saved, carry the name Christian. Well, also, I'm a God in and I'm not making light of that name, that word, G-O-D-I-A-N. If I'm Christ, Christian, I'm God and I'm God's. And how dare you teach someone that you can lose your salvation when you belong to God and Jesus Christ. And now I am no more in the world. Was Jesus worldly? No. He lived and had life in the world. But he wasn't worldly. You can do it. But these are in the world. They're going to be here when I go. Acts. And I come to thee. Imagine a man on this earth sitting on a throne in the Vatican taking that title. When the Bible says, call no man your father. Now that's not blasphemy. That title, Holy Father, Jesus said, belongs to God the Father. And the Roman Catholic Church put that title to the Pope. Now let's read it as a Roman Catholic. I don't want to bash anybody in this chapter, but let, let's get to the truth. 
I am now no more in the world, but these are in the world that I come to thee, Popish. Keep thou thy own name. What do you mean old name? They change their names once they become a pope. You would not give honor to a Polish name. Have you seen some of those names of those popes? You can't even pronounce it. But what? Now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, the disciples. I come to thee, Holy Father. When did Jesus come to the Pope? And it wouldn't be that Jesus came to the Pope, it would be Mary. I come to thee, Holy Father, keep thou keep through thy own name, Jehovah, those whom thou hast given me, saved people that they may be one as we are one jesus is praying to the holy father you know what catholic means catholic means universal they've stolen this verse for their church and you know what jesus is praying to the father god keep us in one in unity you know when that's going to happen at the rapture this prayer will be answered at the rapture and then it will be answered again when Jesus comes back the second advent and he grabs those Jews in sale of Petra that's where they're going to be and then this prayer is going to happen again when he turned these new heavens to new earth new something else it has nothing to do with, with religion truly God and Jesus is speaking that God is not a man here while I was with them in the world, the disciples, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition. Perdition means damnation, destruction, hell. Who are we talking about? Judas. Why is this so? Why is that one person damned for all eternity damned? That the scriptures might be fulfilled. How important is the word of God? Judas is going to hell and burn in hell for all eternity because the scriptures said somebody will stand up and sell him out for 30 pieces of silver and Judas told Satan, I'll do it. Now Judas's name was not written in the scriptures, but there would be one. Judas was all too glad to say, I'll do it. All the rest were kept. So, according to that verse, even though those 12 men were together and lived with Jesus, one of them died and went to hell. He was not saved. You can live with Jesus all you want. If you're not saved, you go to hell. How's that one? So you can have all you can have the work of the ministry and still be a, a lost devil in hell. You can have people out there doing works and doing ministries and still be lost, just as Judas was one of the twelve. And you may look good, you may act good, you may fool the other disciples, but you ain't gonna fool God. Those that did follow Jesus faithful to the end, he knew who they were and he kept them. And you will see those 11 in glory. You'll be able to speak to them in glory. You won't see Judas. And now come I to thee. After he goes in Abraham's bosom in Acts chapter 1. He tells Mary, don't touch me. I haven't sent to the father yet. Now I come to thee, these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy. Oh, Jesus has a joy. Read the fruit of the Spirit. The joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Fulfilled. Fulfilled. Get all, you can get all the filling of Christ's joy. 
If you could not do it, he would lie to you. And we just read previous, a previous chapter or so. He said, I will not lie to you. I will give you the spirit of truth. Do you realize even as sinners, we can get to the impossibility of fulfilled joy in our lives? If we stop letting this flesh get in our way in the world. When the sower went out and sowed the seed, some of it grew and it produced fruit. Hey, look at my fruit. Some of it was, was choked by the cares of the world. Some of it withered up. I have given them. What's it say? What's it say, new church? Laodicean church age. What's it say? Then don't give me your junk. Don't give me your carnivals. Don't give me your balloons. Don't give me. Give them thy word. That's it. It's all you can do. If they don't like the word and you don't bring the crowds, tough do do. If you gather them anyway, but by the word, you're not. It's not to God's own honor and glory. Look how many times the word has shown up in his Lord's prayer. You know how many times the word shows up in the Catholic's Lord's prayer? I'll give you a big zilch. He is praying one-on-one -on -one with God the Father and he's speaking about the word. Like God didn't know the word. The Word is speaking about the Word to God the Father, who authored the Word. And God said, let there be. I believe a lot of people are going to think they're saved and end up in the great way through judgment. Because there was no Word. In this last seen church age. And the Word has hated them who what what's the world hated what was he just talking about the word so if the world hates the word and you remove the word to get the world into your church what are you you're not doing god's will we're not going to do to get to bring people into our church we're not going to bring the word the word we're going to bring something else so they come to church and by this verse you've already ruled out that you know what if the world comes you're doing it wrong because the bible says go ye in all the world it didn't say bring the world in the world has hated them the word because they are not of the world. Okay, the disciples. But disciples go out with the word. For even I am not of the world. And the desire of Jesus is for us. No word, no joy. One of the things you may be lacking joy in your life. Because you're lacking the word. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world. Uh-oh. God, I, uh, Father, keep them here. Now, wouldn't it be great the day we got saved and God said, okay, come home. April 21st, 1987, in the afternoon on a Saturday. I received Christ as my Savior in Waterford, Connecticut. At that moment, I bowed my head to see Christ as my Savior. Boom, I go to heaven. That would have been great. Excellent for me. I would get no crowns. And I don't know how many people's lives I've touched. Through the word. I wouldn't be filling gas at a, at a gas station somewhere. And somewhere. Hey, you know, I remember you. I want to thank you for the word you, you taught us. Because the word you taught us has changed my life. I want to thank you. You were talking to my brother. I, I was. I didn't, didn't even know. You know, he got saved by you preaching the word. You see, if God would to pull us out the day we got saved, other people wouldn't get saved because angels can't carry this message. 
What if God on the road to Damascus, Paul received Christ as his Savior right there on the road to Damascus? Where would Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Philemon, First and Second Timothy, and Titus, Romans, where would all that be? Nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Because Paul gone to heaven. So why is the Christian still here after he's saved? Going all the world and preach the gospel. And then when you do get somebody who received Christ as your Savior, it is your responsibility to raise your spiritual child. Paul told Timothy, you're my son. They were no, no, no. Timothy's son was a Greek. I mean, Timothy's father was a Greek, the Bible says. Who brought Timothy up? And then Paul. His mother's grandma and Paul brought them up in the Lord. So what do we do in the church age today? We bring them to Sunday school. No, no, no. Why? When you got a question in the Bible, what's the Bible say? Go ask your pastor. No, no, no. We've become too reliant on the church. The man in the house has relied on the church to take care of his family. The man of God today is, has a welfare system for his family according to God. Here, let the church take care of it. We're here to tell people about Jesus, then we're here to born Christians and raise them. Isn't it a funny story that Pharaoh's daughter ended up with Moses, but Moses was taken care of by his own mother? Isn't that funny? Wasn't God trying to teach us something? Don't let Moses grow up and let his mother take care of him. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. The evil. Not evil. You know what evil is? Evil is what happens when I sin, but the evil. Help them from the desire to do wrong. And then if they do do wrong, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that ye shall also reap. Paul. Styling. Don't gripe and complain about your diabetes. You want me to bring up all the sugary food you had as a child? No, Lord. Live with it. It's your fault. Lucky I'm showing you mercy and grace. Help them. We are here for a purpose. Isaiah 6, 8 through 11. We're not here to be couch potatoes. We're not here for the worldly event. We're not here for a career. We're, yeah, we're to make a living so we can supply for our family. But we are here for God. Too many Christians are going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ, complete, utter loss, and they're not going to understand why. Look how Christians live today. You think they live for the purpose that God has set them here to be here for what? Then look at their lives. They are not of the world. Now how can it get more plain than that? This is Jesus praying to the Father. Our conduct is to be a testimony that Jesus tells the Father they are not of the world. Can he say that about you? Can he turn to the Father with you standing there? That person is blank world. Not of the world or just the world. You're going to stand before God one day. Jesus is going to speak for you. He is our advocate. He is our defense attorney. He's going to say, even as I am not of the world. Aren't Christ, isn't Christ our example? Christ can go to the Father and say, hey, I am not of the world. What about us Christians? Christian. That title was given to men and women who live Christ-like. Go ahead. Keep on living the world. Keep on hanging out with your family and friends and co-workers and people who don't worldly Christians. Go ahead. Go ahead and do it. But I'm telling you right now, you're going to suffer at the judgment seat of Christ. And don't you look at me as an excuse.
sanctify them through thy truth there it is again thy word is truth you got jesus who said i won't lie to you i am the truth the holy spirit the spirit of truth the word is truth it's right there why does the world reject jesus in the bible because it's the truth who wants the truth? One of those superheroes for the truth and all. Yeah, bull. As thou, God, has sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Look at that. Jesus was sent here for a purpose. He sent those 11 men out for a purpose. We are here purposely. And too many don't follow that purpose. You're going to suffer. Maybe not hell. But I don't know what it would be like walking around in heaven with no crowns. There's no envy in heaven. Absolutely no envy. Envy is what Pilate said about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the chief priests. But how do you walk around in heaven when it comes time to cast those crowns at Jesus' feet? You ain't got none. And don't tell me that Jesus is going to let you have crowns just so you can have crowns. No, God don't work like that. God is holy. If you don't earn a crown, you ain't getting it. In all eternity, you sought your rewards here. You ain't going to have them in glory. Jesus said in 1718, as the Father has sent me, I am going to send them. There's no way around it. Yes, Paul made tents with Priscilla, and I forget her husband's name. He made a living. He earned money. He preached in churches and got money. He had to get more money from, from other churches because some churches couldn't afford him. But he set out as a purpose to preach the gospel and train others. And for their sakes, I sanctify, I set apart myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth, set apart by the truth, by the word. How am I supposed to live? You go to the Bible, find out how you're supposed to live. God has given us 2016, the completed Bible. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Paul, Philip, Timothy, Philemon. Philemon was a well known guy to Paul. Spoke highly of them. That elderly lady in, in first and second John, they did not have the completed word. We do. And we live the most miserable Christian lives with the completed word. Shame on us. Shame. Neither pray I for these alone. Now watch this. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word paul was one of them i was read romans when i got saved i believe there i am in chapter 17 long before i even got saved there i am i believed on one of the disciples one of the apostles the word that he spoke so i'll bring you a wordless book and they got saved through the wordless book. <laughs> it's not what that verse says. I may not know everything that Joe Whitmore and Joe Caswell showed me that afternoon. But I know I know 100% there was an open Bible. I know that. I know Romans 10 was open. I know that. Everything else they showed me, I but I know it was in the Bible. I know it was the Bible. I know he read to the Bible. I know he put my, he put the finger there and said, Stolly, read this. I know he did that. And I know I read certain passages of scriptures, which I couldn't quote today, which I couldn't show you today because I don't remember. But I know the word of God said, Stiley, you're going to hell. Stiley, you are, see this? It says you're a sinner. Stiley, what are you going to do? I'm going to believe. I want to get saved. I don't want to go to hell. Verse 20. 
there I am. And verse, what was it? Verse 17, I'm sanctified through the word that I was shown. Verse 14, 15, God told him, Stolly got saved, don't you take him out, you leave him there. And I know he's going to, I already know what Stolly is going to do. He's going to be faithful. He's also a sinner, but he's going to be faithful. You better leave him there. I can tell you a lot of lives in my life that Satan tried to kill me. But I am sanctified by the word that they that they all may be one. There's the rapture. When we meet in the clouds. When God separates those that are truly saved, those who just said I'm saved, and those who are not saved. By the way, the Catholic Church will say that's them, the one Catholic, one universal. I just have to throw that in real quick. But they all may be one. There are saved people in Turkey. There are saved people in Africa. There are saved people in Asia. There are saved people maybe California there are saved people in Mexico there are saved people right now missionary we help support in the Congo we're all over the world but you know what we all have according to chapter 16 we all have the Holy Spirit we're one God knows who are his he knows where all his children are all over the world we're one and we're waiting for that day that we become pure one as we meet as one at the rapture and then we go before Jesus Christ next As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Here's a doctrine. You ready? What's the Trinity? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. How about adding every believer? In us. Now, this is a weird kind of doctrine, but what is it? it looks like in the eternal future. We will be one with the eternity. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you say I'm far-fetched, I'm, I'm on a rack of it. Don't I marry Jesus Christ as his bride? Doesn't it say somewhere in the Bible that a husband and wife become... <laughs> Look at that. I become part of the eternity. By the, I become part of the trinity by the death. By Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he arose again the third day according to the scriptures by believing on that I become part of the royal family never mind them in England not only am I a child of God but I become his son-in-law no daughter-in-law excuse me I become his daughter-in-law forgive me for that one I become a princess in the holy blue line blood of Jesus Christ, sinless by the God the Father. Us, the Trinity. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. God, Jesus Christ, gives those who have believed on through the word the glory. Christian, when people look at you, they should say, well, there's something different about you. I don't know what it is, but you're weird. You're strange. You don't fit in. You don't belong. It's amazing how everybody knew where, who Jesus was when he showed up. I in them. He's in me. And thou in me. That they... He's praying for us now before the Father. He's now praying for those that believe. May be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. How is the world going to know? Christians go out there and tell them. Take the word. Paul didn't have a Bible, but boy did he quote Old Testament scriptures. Peter and James and John would go right into the right into the synagogues, grab the, the rolls, the scrolls, 
and start preaching out of them. And what in Second Peter said, all right, Peter had some of Paul's letters. He would read and teach and sometimes scratch his head. Well, what was that? And yet Peter never changed Paul's words. Father, I will that thou also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Glory that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. There it is again Jesus before Mary's womb. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee. Uh-oh. But I have known thee. Uh-oh. There are people who don't know the Father, and there are people who know the Father. And these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it. That the love, oh, here's the love of God, closes with love. That the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Well, highlight those who believe on Jesus Christ as their Savior. The love that God showed upon his Son now comes into us. So when you believe on Jesus Christ, I'm not changing scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave. That's a past tense. When you believe on Christ, now the love comes in. God is love. 